welcome to another episode of the Chronic Comeback Podcast. Uh, this week, I'm really happy to have on the show Danny Fagan. Um, so, Danny's story began in her health story, anyway, uh, began in 2015, where she began to develop a crippling uh, body pain, particularly in her back, uh, that left her completely debilitated and even at times bound to a wheelchair, really not able to get around. Like most of our guests uh, on, on the podcast, at the, at the darkest times, Danny had two options. She could either give up and accept this was how it was and she would never get better or fight and, and figure it out. Thankfully, she chose the latter. And uh, fast forward to today, she is thriving, pain-free and running her own business where she now helps other people reclaim their health. Um, it's kind of, I love, I love this kind of story because it really is like a sliding doors moment. I spoke to her yeah. about this and, you know, the career she was previously in and what she's doing now. And uh, yeah, I'd really like to get into that, but welcome. Thank you. Lovely to, uh, to see you. Thanks for having me, Phil. Nice to be on and share the, uh, shed the goodness. Um, do you want me to just dive in or do you want to go in a specific? Well, it, I mean, take us back to that time, if you could, like what life mm. like before uh, 2015, uh, you know, how your life was. And then, yeah, take us through that story and, and what happened. Yeah. So it, was a, it wasn't necessarily a particularly a specific moment that anything kind of happened. I think it was now what I've learned more recently. Um, I saw my kind of the climax of that pain as being a bit of a progression of like death by a thousand paper cuts. So over time, basically what had happened was um, I'd had like, I'd had anxiety pretty much my whole life as far as back as I could remember. So my nervous system was completely dysregulated. Um, so anything else that kind of got planted onto my, um, into my life, like stresses or traumas that were happening or, you know, life just gets lifey as you grow up, the older you get, the more kind of tricky this life gets. Um, so what, what, what happened to me was I just basically just woke up in the middle of the night, um, one night and I couldn't turn over. I was just, it was almost like, you know, a lot of people say like your back went out or you have this explosion of pain. Um, but I didn't injure myself. I didn't have anything, you know, crop up or any kind of like specific acute injury or moment in time that made that happen. So I was really, which in hindsight is a good thing because that I didn't think it was necessarily something that I'd broken or something that was like, you know, acutely wrong um so from that time um i did i don't remember ever ha really having much pain or anything before that it was, it was probably more progressive um i wish i kind of had a diary or something to look back on at that time um but i did have other symptoms before as well i, I had like um irritable bowel kind of symptoms like bloating tummy i had bad headaches for a long time so i had a quite of a mixture now i look back i had a mixture of different things um, a bit of insomnia thrown in there as well. So they were all really basically signs of a dysregulated nervous system. So, um, and this is probably really quite relevant to maybe a lot of people that listen to this or a lot of people that you maybe have already had on before. I haven't heard a lot of the, the episodes so far, but you've told me something about your own story. And like, basically, um, when your nervous system gets completely out of whack or it is in this sustained fight or flight panic kind of fearful scenario and that's like subconsciously you wouldn't necessarily know that that is happening to you your body will produce symptoms so your body might produce uh, emotional symptoms so it might be like anxiety slash depression slash ocd that kind of more mental kind of issue um or you might have chronic body symptoms so the most common thing um for nervous system like dysregulation in the body is like pain so some sort of pain, chronic pain, joint pain, stomach pain, whatever that is, you know, fibromyalgia, that kind of stuff. Um, so that, I mean, at, at first I thought I'd busted something. I thought like my spine has snapped or I don't know what. I had loads of tests. I went to every single doctor, specialist, therapist, chiropractor, physiotherapist, you name it. I went to it and the, I had every drug under the sun, injections, steroids, 
everything. The only thing that I didn't have, and I'm thankful now that um, I wasn't offered this, was surgery because I'd heard, I actually was like wanted surgery because I thought that would be a solution, right? So you get so desperate when you're stuck in this position and you're thinking, well, is this it, you know? And I, I didn't really believe that, that that was it because I wasn't being given a solution. And I suppose that's a good thing because it spurred me on to figure this new sort of path out from there. Um, so I had MRIs and stuff like that, and they found herniated disc and disc degeneration, which is like one of the most common uh, diagnoses of lower back pain, which is one of the most common pain complaints in the world. Um, but in the vast majority of cases, like um, disc degeneration and herniated discs don't cause pain. They are just like a normal aging, a normal abnormality, like having gray hair, like having, you know, an aging body, basically. Um, so, but because the doctors in the Western kind of medical model don't know so much about this mind body emotional aspect to um to your physical kind of symptoms they were just seeing the herniated disc and the de degeneration and saying to me well this is what your issue is this is causing your pain it has to be that's that's the abnormality that's what we see so this is your diagnosis but then they weren't giving me any options it was like you just need to do physio forever or you just need to like have pain management forever and that was it and i thought this is just bullshit and it was kind of a bit of a divine intervention when um a friend of mine was posting something on Facebook about having a bad back. And now I look at it like so many people suffer from the same sort of things as you sort of tune into something, don't you? When you suffer from something, you kind of like, you see it everywhere. Um, and someone recommended this book. Um, and I thought, how the, can I swear on here? Sorry. Oh, how the fuck, how the fuck can a book cure me of this? Like, hot machete that's stabbed in my back 24 7 do you know what I mean I was like this is bullshit but whatever I was desperate so I got this book and it's written by this lovely man this lovely doctor called Dr Sarno who is like the saint in my house now we should have a little shrine for him or something um basically he discovered well in the western world he discovered that there is a direct correlation between um repressed and prolonged emotional strain whether that is from a specific traumatic event or just, like I said, a hundred little things that pile up. Um, your nervous system basically shoots out symptoms to you because it's, it's safer and, and better for you to kind of experience those or easier for you to experience those than it is to look at the emotional strain and emotional turmoil that you're carrying. So if you don't address or emotionally kind of feel stuff as they happen it happens in your life which probably the vast majority of us don't we're all taught to like don't cry bury it under the carpet everything will be all right think positively good vibes only all this kind of bullshit mm -hmm. um and we just push all those things aside and we think that those don't need to be dealt with and you know we'll just crack on and we should be 100 percent, 100 miles an hour in, in our whole life and just carry on and run and run and run and society now is just so like productive based i think you just become so fast paced you don't give yourself time to even rest or recuperate over anything that happens to you so over time um basically my nervous system just went that's enough like we've had enough we're going to give you all these symptoms and they they're kind of like an alarm bell to make you just sort of wake up to something that is dysregulated something's wrong something's out of balance something's out of whack you need to you need to look at this so it's like a a distress signal basically from the nervous system um but it can manifest in so many different ways a really common way is um back pain and that book i told you that i read was called healing back pain by dr john sarno and he called it that because that was one of the most common manifestations of this condition which is just the mind body it's just called mind body connection basically it can manifest in any million different ways um like i said headaches migraines fibromyalgia any kind of consistent pain in the body that isn't caused by a specific thing um there's loads of different things um ibs is one of them but basically the, the nervous system just gets whacked and you can't your body isn't functioning as it should as it should function mm. um so i found out if i read the book and it was like reading my own story it was like he saw into my life and he wrote about what my childhood was like he wrote about what my working life was like he wrote about it's just amazing how 
almost cookie cutter, although everybody's story is very different, if you have a specific type of path or like upbringing or journey or whatever, then, and your type of personality type as well, if you're a, a, a sensitive person, you know, you're, you, you stuff emotions down to people please other people, you're a goodist, you're, you know, you always want to be seen to be doing the right thing and all that kind of thing, then you suppress your, re your reality, you suppress your, your real feelings, your real emotions. And the nervous system just like kind of builds up if you imagine it like um like a pressure cooker so you you ladle into the pressure cooker throughout your life these stresses traumas stuff that happens to you and you actually just press it all down at some point it has to overflow if you're not ladling anything out with any work you're doing or you know therapy or whatever it is so basically i figured out from this book that um it's it's more of a mental slash emotional issue it's a psychological issue mm. that makes your physical body erupt mm. and it can be in many ways like i say even stuff like psoriasis and eczema and any chronic condition really that isn't you know cancer or an, or an injury or something like that is you know it's, it's got a very high probability of being a mind body issue do you, do you think out of interest do you think it can be a combination of, of both for sure. Yeah, you can learn pain, definitely. Like I, I know some people that have um, maybe had a bad accident or had an injury somewhere in their body and then the, the, the brain learns that that is a problem, problematic area. So even though, let's say, six to eight weeks goes away, uh, passes, that your normal healing time should sort of be for that particular thing, your brain you know, learns that pain and continues to fire those signals at you specifically as well. If you're very fearful of the pain and the issue that you're going through, then that sort of triggers the brain to keep firing those signals and even make them even worse. Um, so the brain is like the most powerful thing in all of this because it's triggering everything. It's controlling everything. So I'm not saying by any means that pain is in your in your mind it's not in your head like you're not making it up it's it's a physical issue you feel you can be contorted you can be you won't be able to walk you might not be able to stand up you've got spasms you can literally palpate your body where like when i had my back pain i could touch my back and it was like a rock i was literally hunched over my my back was like an s shape it was it is a physical issue but it's just not caused by a physical problem um the, the, re yeah. the, re the reason why I ask that is just because um, I always think back to whenever I've gone down, whenever I went down more of the mind body route with it, mm. they would always try to quiz me on what were you going through at that particular time in your life? It'd be yeah. a time of leading up until that point. And for me, uh, for, for when I, these symptoms first started happening, I had, I had been through, I'd just left university, I was traveling, I was having yeah. a changing time. So, yeah, I, yeah. But there's another flip side to that as well. And I totally agree with you. I, when, I, when I learned about this, I was like, well, what was really actually happening at that time? And I don't think there was anything necessarily specifically acutely that was happening. But also we can get very used to having our own stresses just be our normality. Mm -hmm. So for us, like a, a regular day where I'm feeling particularly happy and great, it might have been the, the build up to your end of your university that was like your, your climax. And then when you finally graduate and you left and you're having all these parties and this great time, your body then felt safe enough to just like let it all explode out. You mm -hmm. kind of, you know, like when you go, when you come up to Christmas break and you're like, suddenly you get ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're relaxed. Yeah. There's, so there's two sides to it. There's like, it can be, it can be triggered and toppled over by a, a specific traumatic event or a, a sort of progression of, of traumatic events, or it can just explode when you feel safe enough for it to explode. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I definitely wasn't saying, cause I, so when I was talking about that, I was more, for me, I actually think uh, it was, it, it, it's similar, but it's more like I've got, elements of my personality and mm -hmm. that I do that has exacerbated and probably put me in that position in the first place. Sure. So it wasn't necessarily a big emotional thing that happened or, you know, repressed childhood memories, although there might be. Right. But it's more that I've got elements of my personality that are pushing me a hundred percent all of the time. All of the right. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's you know, it's the same thing really, but I guess when exactly. I, when I was having these conversations with people previously, uh, 
and it was always they were always trying to put it back to was it this big emotional thing that happened to you at that point in your life and they didn't really talk about you know the my, maybe my personality traits that may have caused yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating really to read about this sort of stuff because that is almost that stuff was was almost what stood out to me more when I was reading the book about, um, you know, the John Sarno book was that these specific type of people will be the people that suffer chronically. You know, like there's elements where if, if you've got bad knees, like my partner's got has had bad knees and he fears his knees. So his knees will get some, what the pain in his knees will get exacerbated when he's fearing them and he's avoiding stuff and he's not training hard and he's not doing all this but as soon as he sorts his mindset out that kind of goes away so there's a very mild version of mind body issue that you can have or a very chronic long term but like you say the, the personality traits are key to this because whether or not we even work on our emotional world or we do feel our feelings or we do go to therapy or we do address all the stresses that we happen to have in life, if we've still got that very hyper-vigilant, hyper-aroused, got to do everything 100% right, I've got to be the A student, I've got to try really hard, I've got to impress my parents, I've got to impress my boss, whatever it is, that it keeps your nervous system in a perpetual state of fight or flight, regardless of whether you've got a stressful job or not. Like you could not have a job at all and be living on a beach and you'd still be like, you know, freaking your nervous system out. Yeah, no, totally. Well, I, I left my job to focus on my health. And all I did was I went traveling and then I, I, I just went onto this next thing and I got obsessed with this, trying to right. do, like launch this business. And I just got really obsessed with that. And I found that I just couldn't, I actually just physically couldn't, couldn't relax. I couldn't relax. And, I, and being honest, I... <laughs> I very rarely, I, I, I remember someone saying to me, you've probably never really felt relaxed. And I, I don't think I have. You know, when you like, like yeah, you, li you lie by the pool at, and I'm enjoying my, I'm having a good Fidgeting, day. yeah, yeah, same, same. Just like, I'm not, I'm not relaxed. Um, same. It's, it, it's difficult. Um, anyway, I'll hijack your story, sorry. No, no, not at all. I think it's really important to like, to share it out because it's so relevant to, I think, what you're experiencing. And I know you're still kind of figuring out your own, process and stuff but it's it's interesting to hear what how you've experienced that as well yeah well i've, I've actually got some specific questions back uh, about what i'm going through actually uh, yeah. but I'll come back to that um, mm. so you you were you, at what point in that two three year period so three year period did you read the book and could you talk that was the process that? yeah so the three year mark is where i I sort of drew the line at where I found that book. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't necessarily become pain free after three years. I was like, that was the three years of suffering. I was like sofa bound. I couldn't sit up in a chair. I couldn't stand up and stuff like that. Not for very long anyway. Um, so I knew that this was what was going on with me. I was completely bought into it, but I, I wasn't sure really from that book, like what to do next. It wasn't very clear. Although he was saying like, think, psych think psychologically, don't think physically. It's very vague. I mean, it's written in the eighties, you know what I mean? It's not like this, like the amount of information we have online now. Um, and unfortunately he died not long ago. So there's, he did a few follow up books and there's a lot of um, his successors that are now sort of doing this work and stuff. So to cut a, about a year and a half to two years story short, um, I did more research. I, I went back to the gym. I started, you know, one of his main prescribed things was to just get back to the, your, your old life as much as you can without fear, which was a uh, fucking difficult because like when you're feeling like you can't even stand up, like getting back to any sort of Pilates or yoga or whatever I used to always do was, was really difficult. But I took it slowly. I went back to some sort of movement. I started to feel better just from having an answer, you know, just from having that like relief of like, okay, I'm not broken. And there was a time it took a while for it to be, you know, 100% belief. I it was still very much, I mean, you're taught your whole life, aren't you? That the medical model is to be trusted and the doctors know everything and you have to do what they say, otherwise you're going to end up worse. And they put the fear of God in you as well. Plus you've got all these MRIs that are scaring the shit out of you as well. And it's just like, who do you believe? This guy in a random guy in a book, you know? Yeah. Um, so I did some more research and I found some of his successors. I found eventually um, a, psycholo a psychologist that worked with him um, in the, in his medical center in New York. Um, her name's Nicole Sachs. Um, she has an amazing podcast and um, she's a writer and she does retreats and all this kind of thing. 
So she has this process that she teaches, which sounds really woo woo and sounds like, oh, fuck off. You're not going to write your way out of chronic pain. But she basically teaches this form of expressive writing called journal speak. And it is like a massive daily brain dump that you do onto paper of whatever is pissing you off, whatever is in your mind, whatever's taking up space in your heart, whatever you're you can't let go of from your past, anyone that's double crossed you, all that shit that you bury that you think is, oh, that's in the past, that's bollocks, but it actually sort of comes up into your memory now and again. And, you know, it does, if it hurt, basically, if, if it hurt you then, it needs to be voiced now, right? So I did this expressive writing every day, followed by a short meditation. And both things are um, geared towards settling your nervous system so expressing all of this this emotion that has been hidden for so long and it's turbulent don't get me wrong it's not easy it didn't like happen overnight this is you know you're facing your demons basically which is not not a pretty thing but one of the most freeing things i think i've ever done so you do a a 20 minute thereabouts writing practice every day i did it in the morning time followed by about 10 minutes 15 minutes meditation um so you're expressing the emotion that you've had repressed and then you're settling the nervous system down with the meditation afterwards and that progressively over time it's like going to a gym you know you get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger over time and after about uh i'd say probably after about two months of doing that on a daily basis life or death i did it every single day um i started to have pain-free chunks of time and i didn't even notice because when it's not there it's not shouting you. So you don't notice when it goes. It's really quite odd. Um, I just noticed I was able to do a bit more and then I'd be walking down the street and go, shit, it's not hurting, you know? And then shit, it would hurt. It's like you turn the brain back on and then suddenly it's really sore again. So it took a while to get to a point where I was having pain-free days. And even then I was still getting bad flare-ups and that's very common as well. Once you start to really dig into the nervous system um, regulation and health, um, it'll kick off. It'll be like fireworks for a little while. It will, you know, the healing path is never straight, right? It goes up and down and round and round. You have amazing days. You have really shit days. Your emotions are like up and down as well because you're unearthing all of this shit that you buried forever. And you're learning a lot about yourself and having to set boundaries with friends and family and just like really realizing what it is that stresses you out. So it's a massive sort of self-realization learning experience. Um, so at that point... I reached out to Nicole and I told her that her work could work for me. I went on her podcast a couple of times. And just since then, like, I just been getting progressively better. And, um, I went, I got well enough that I went and did a yoga teacher training course, which has always been something that I've always wanted to do. And I would thought I'd never in a million years, one, be good enough to do two, be pain free enough to do. And as soon as I had like a couple of couple of weeks pain free, I booked it. I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to fucking do it. And it was terrifying. So the pain kicked off <laughs> when I was there. So I had big flare ups when I was over there, but I did it. And now I, well, I find that yoga and particularly meditation and breath work um, throughout my recovery, when I actually managed to get back to the studio and get back to my own practice, were massively beneficial for this like it is literally i didn't know the science of yoga before i started any of this i just enjoyed it and thought it made me feel good but since learning about why um it is a mind body practice you know it's the perfect kind of chemistry to settle the nervous system to also get yourself very embodied so you're out of your monkey madness mind you're very much in your body and in regulating your own systems with breath work i know you're kind of uh, familiar with that um you're getting out of your head and into your body basically and just sort of regulating yourself. Um, yeah, so I did the the training and then now, well, before, actually before I did the training, I decided to just put all of the resources that I learned with throughout this process, podcasts and books and et cetera, and my own story into a website, just to like a blog kind of thing, just to help other people, just to whack it out online and whoever whoever finds it great. And that got quite popular. And then I did the yoga teacher training course and just thought, I didn't actually think this at the time. I didn't realize that I could kind of marry the two things together. But then I figured like, why don't I start teaching people what helped me? You know, people in this community that I've become quite close with in the Facebook groups and stuff. So now, long story short, I teach the chronic pain, this chronic mind-body connection community 
yoga, bread, meditation and breath work. So it's, um, yeah, it's been a mad journey, but I, it's, um, it's mad. I just don't understand how the whole world doesn't know about this. Like how, how so many people suffer physically and they just assume it's a physical problem and they treat it as a physical problem, which can sometimes actually make it worse. Um, because you're reinforcing to your brain that you have a physical problem. You know, it's not, you're not looking into your emotional world, into your psychological anything. You're just like, I have a physical thing, give me a pill, give me a surgery, you know? Um, and just to confirm, you, uh, for it so everyone knows, you were a graphic designer before, was that right? Yeah, yes. yeah. When, did you, at what point did you stop? being a graphic designer i still do bits it's the, but i dropped most of my clients only like a couple of months ago so i'm full-time doing this now um i've got a couple of clients that are friends that i do bits and bobs for now and again some flyers and some websites and stuff but very little so i do i just do it for myself now i do my own social media and website and all that kind of stuff so thankfully between me and my partner we've got the skills to not have to outsource any of that kind of thing so we do it all in-house but it's quite heavy being like all of the staff members in one person or two people you know it's quite a lot sure um mm. so i've got uh yeah i've got quite a few questions for you basically yeah go for it on what you said i mean first of all it's quite a ballsy move to read that book and suddenly just say this is it now this is this is it is the mind body connection no, i'm going to ignore the physical stuff yeah mate read it you'll yeah. probably do the same thing really? when you, if it is what's happening it yeah. will shake you to your very core what they what they're saying and everything they said makes sense but yeah i totally agree and it did take me a while to completely be 100 percent on board because i thought well surely i mean the bones are nearly touching each other you know a lot of people say they have bone on bone or they have um spondylolisthesis like nicole the the lady that i followed her program for she's got spondylolisthesis and her mri looks like a complete fucked up nightmare but she has zero pain so your body can adapt your body can heal your body just over time learns to kind of deal with these abnormalities and you don't you know we're built to heal we're built as resilient beings we're not these fragile skeletons you know but yeah, it did take me a little while to be like 100% on board. But when someone hands you something that says, Danny Fagan, this is the story of Danny Fagan, you, you're like, well, fucking hell, there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Yeah. And I knew as soon as I started to think more psychologically and look back at my life and think, oh my God, look how many like explosions of symptoms I've had that have been unexplained and have been like, oh, well, you must have uh, gluten intolerance or you must just have some kind of ocular issues stop using your phone so much you won't get headaches and all that kind of thing but it's now looking back i see just how obvious it is and now once you, once you get tuned into your sort of body mind you notice things in your body before you're even thinking about them as an emotional issue so you might be triggered by someone's behavior you might get a belly ache, or you might feel a bit nauseous, or you might just, do you know, what I mean? when you have a stressful day and you're not really sure who's pissed you off, but you feel like you feel sick and tired or brain fog or fatigue, or that is the mind body in action. It's just not a chronic thing. Like once you tune in, you'll see that happening all day. It's quite exhausting. <laughs> and did, so did you have, uh, did you feel, did it, because I know you said you had like headaches and stuff like that. You had, yeah chronic pain did you feel unwell as well like had fatigue and stuff like that? yeah 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 i had fatigue i was like basically depressed like i think there's two prongs to that i think an emotional issue can obviously bring you to the point of feeling anxious and depressed but also being in chronic pain mm. can trigger you being you know thinking your fucking life's over um so yeah, there was there was there was many different things. Fatigue. I had brain fog. I had insomnia. Um, I had gut issues. Um, I'm just trying to think. I do have a list on my phone somewhere. I've actually lost some hair as well. My hair started falling out. I had um, shingles came out as well. Um, yeah. So, all the all the great stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted. To start, I think it's important for anyone listening to to be. It's almost like when someone says back pain. Because everyone yeah. has back pain, people just think, oh, well, you know, everyone has back pain. Like mm. the kind of back pain you're talking about is, yeah, I mean, because I get really bad back pain, but not like, you know, that I can't get off the sofa. And right. so 
I just wanted everyone to realise the severity of it. Um, yeah. With, with with that, um, and it kind of this is going back to kind of like my story now. So I'm in a position where, um, and a few things you said like really resonated with me. Um, I, I used to, I used to be in a position where I felt really, I felt like shit, and I had all these um, had all these symptoms. However, I would push myself to do physical activity. So I push mm-hmm. myself to play football, um, mm-hmm. and push myself in the gym and feel terrible but I, I would do it because although I felt terrible I felt terrible when I didn't do it so right. I was, well, I'm going to force myself to do it but now I'm in a position where I've got these chronic injuries um so I've got it in a position where like my, my I had ACL surgery on my knee mm-hmm. and I think that's caused me to get really bad like my hips are in a really bad way and now I've got chronic uh, tennis and golf elbows in both my elbows. So I'm yeah. in a position where I've kind of forced myself to do exercise, but it's kind of backfired. Do you, do you think, but I don't think there was an element of me that I maybe did it with the wrong mindset. So it was more I was pushing through it rather than... Right, you were, you were self-pressurising your way to it. Yeah, I was like, well, fuck this illness. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, mm. but, but I wasn't like... But I don't think I was doing it in the right mindset. Do you really think that the right? I think it makes a massive difference. Yeah, I think for me and what I've learned, if you're doing something out of love of doing it, Mm. your mindset is in a very different place as if you're doing something because you're fearful of something happening or some outcome or fearful of getting worse or fearful of... And also just the mindset of like, are you, are you self-pressurizing yourself to do this because fuck it, because it's a war, because I'm going to win? Or are you going, do you know what, Phil? I want you to feel good, mate. Let's go and have a little run around the park. Do you know what I mean? It's very different on the, just how that feels in you. When I say that to you, does that feel like, yeah, that feels lovely. Or does that feel like, oh shit, I don't really want to do that because it's like fighting something. I think where, the difference for me was once I stopped the battle, and it's funny because in Sano's book, he says like, you know, speak to your brain with authority and you can almost tell your brain off, like, fuck off brain, I've got this, I'm fine. You know, you can start an argument with your brain that didn't really work for me because that was an almost a fearful state for me to be in. Mm -hmm. I react and respond much better to a much more loving kind of kindness. Let's do this to help ourselves. Let's do this to make ourselves feel nice or let's do this out of the enjoyment of the practice itself, like for yoga or for you, whatever that is, like weightlifting or football or whatever. You know, if you're doing that because you enjoy it and you love it and it makes you feel great, then yeah, you can you can push through, so to speak. Um, you know, those barriers of feeling fatigued and stuff like that. And you do eventually teach the brain that you are safe. But the nervous system is just looking for safety signals. It's not looking for fear. It's not looking for any sort of threat. If it senses any kind of threat, then it's going to keep firing the signals. As simple as that. Mm, really interesting. Um, mm. Also, really what you said. Because you said about having an MRI scan, so yeah. recently I've had an MRI scan on my hip, and they they showed that there was this benign tumor there, not nothing cancerous, nothing yeah. thing there, and then there was this, there was something else there, and it was like scary. Immediately, like okay, well, there's something wrong. I need to get this sorted, and so, mm-hmm. but. I think I spoke to you about it um, when we last spoke uh, about looking into Joe Dispenza work and yeah. stuff you can heal with, with your mind. And mm. I'm just, ever since having my knee surgery, which didn't go well, like my knee's not in a good way. And that's because of the surgery, not because of the, well, obviously because of the injury, but more because of the surgery, I think. I've okay. always been really scared of having an, another surgery. Do you think yeah. in an instance where I've, I've gone and got a scan on a, on, on a, on a hip like that. And it hasn't been recover. It hasn't been recovering at all. It's, it is completely chronic, but they're saying, Oh, there's this thing there. Do, would you think it's the type of thing that you should really focus on it with your mind and should never resort to, to, to see? I mean, not necessarily even think of it with your mind. I think from what I've read and I'm not going to give you medical advice, no, no. obviously I haven't got a fucking clue what I'm talking about, but <laughs> from my own experience and from learning, like, if you have an MRI, they're going to find something in yeah. every part of your body. You know, you're not nine years old anymore. Something's going to come up, right? 
So for me, they found scoliosis and then suddenly the top part of my back started hurting as well. And the fear factor that comes from these kind of scans and this imagery is just can really push you over the edge and keep things firing crazily. So firstly, I'd probably get a second opinion or maybe even go to a physician that has TMS training, that has um, mind body training and they can give you more of a holistic kind of um approach and look at all the areas of your body and your mind and your brain and your past and your experiences and stuff rather than going oh there's something there therefore that has to be it yeah. um yeah. what really helped me to understand as well in my back like when i was told i had a herniated disc i was sure always that my pain was right inside my spine like i was like no 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 it's right here it's right here but where i was pressing when i was showing my chiropractor and stuff was on the muscle like the tissue is where this kind of sort of mind body pain happens, you know, in the soft tissue, in the fascia, in the muscles, in the, in, in that sort of place where you can palpate, you can actually touch it. So if you can feel that, you know, maybe, and it's something really common in the hips as well that I should probably mention that was partly, um, my issue was the, the psoas muscle that goes from your lower lumbar spine through the hip into your leg is the muscle that controls your fight or flight response so it's really common to have hip pain with a mind body issue really common pelvic pain hip pain back pain we're all in this area from what i've read and learning in yoga teaching as well that you know your your fight or flight response is kind of like kicked off in that area of your psoas and in your diaphragm and your breathing to get you ready to run away and get you ready to fight right so your body's like tense like that and ready to go but if you're in that perpetual state of fight or flight all the time, then that is going to just literally turn into a chronic pain issue, a chronic tightness, a chronic like aggravated area. And like you said earlier, like, you know, if you're, if you have this sort of like weak zone, let's say in your knee or in your hip, your focus is always going to be fearful about that area. It's always going to be like, Oh, I don't want to make it worse. Or I might need to have another surgery or what does this doctor say? And that fear, is like the fuel to the fire of this shit. It's really interesting what you said about uh, Nicole's scan uh, and uh, yeah. your own scan. Um, yeah, mine's fucked. Yeah, but but the, your body is actually really intelligent and then it adapts and... Yeah, that doesn't cause pain. doesn't cause yeah. pain. I mean, like, they, they're even saying that, like, um, you know, certain types of arthritis, I think it's rheumatoid. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't had that as an issue or known anybody with that, but that... Um, you know that's a normal type of aging as well and that when when you have these kind of pains in your joints carpal tunnel syndrome is another one plantar fasciitis in your feet is another one there's so many different like chronic things that just have names and have diagnoses but diagnoses are just like groups of symptoms that doctors find and just say well you have this in your foot or you have this swelling in your foot you have this 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 or you have this thing yeah. but there's no there's no cure there's no reason there's no like injury or you know, tumor or whatever going on. So I think uh, as always, like with anything, it's always first thing to do is get it, get it ruled out by a few different doctors, see a few different doctors, maybe see, even if it's just like a, a zoom uh, appointment with a, a doctor that is trained in mind body, cause it's not that common here. There are some, I can put you in touch with some people in the UK. There's a, a, um, uh, a thing called SERPA, which is like, um, a regulatory kind of or they're a company that uh, was run by a lady who's a physiotherapist i believe she's a physiotherapist chiropractor one or the other um called georgie oldfield and she trains other physicians and psychotherapists um i think mainly in a psychotherapy type way to to learn this kind of methodology there's loads of places in the states there's one place called the ppda and they are literally training physicians now to to learn this kind of thing. There's loads of practitioners in the States you could probably get a teleconference with. Um, but just do some reading. Like, I would totally encourage you to just do some reading, maybe read, um, listen to a few of the podcasts and stuff, and just see what resonates with you. Because for me, that was the convincing part. I mean, I, my MRI still looks the same. If I didn't really buy into that, like, wow, this is me, 100% of what they're saying is me. I would have gone, yeah, that's bullshit, and probably still be in the same place as I was just back then, you know? Why, why don't they have any of these bloody practitioners in the UK? Just, the UK is just so far behind. It's, almost... it's, it's starting to happen. There's definitely starting to happen. Um, 
And there are elements of this already in practice. Like you go to a doctor's and you say, oh, I've got back pain, I've got this, I've got that, I've got this. They might pres- prescribe you meditation or yoga, but you go, fucking talking about, okay, yeah, go and do a bit of yoga. It's, a, it's the biggest cliche in the world, but there's reasons why they, you know, they know about nervous system health. They know about probably symptoms kicking off with nervous system dysregulation because they know that stressed people get ulcers or stressed people get migraines or stressed people get tummy problems you know but it's just not understood that over time it can you know what i'm showing up to you it looks like i've broken my back is actually the same thing and there's um there's a really cool um uh he's an author also and a a a guy called gabor mate i don't know if you've heard of him he takes it even further and he's written about and teaches about um how past trauma can turn to um, addiction can turn to um, also really hectic illnesses like cancers, like basically anything and everything can be caused by suppressed psychological issues, which is really, really fascinating. Mm. If you're into that kind of thing, <laughs> which I am. Yeah. Could you uh, just going back to like when you're in the, the middle of all of this uh, and you were, you know, uh, wheelchair bound sofa bound you know not able to to move i imagine it was having a real impact on your you know your social life uh, yeah work. i didn't have one exactly uh, you like that how that how that was and but also how how were you able to kind of like keep going in in that in those times? Uh, thankfully i worked from home so i got out of my last office job um my partner worked there he actually owned the business and um i managed to kind of start off my i started off doing part-time for that office job so i managed to reduce my hours it was really stressful and my back was just you know terrible at the time so i managed to get most of my hours from home so i sat on my sofa with my legs out ahead of me or my knees up so that my back was as open as possible and as relaxed as possible and then i didn't experience pain unless i moved or tried to get up um, but yeah, I rarely went out and met friends because I couldn't be on my feet for very long. Um, I couldn't sit in the car to drive anyway. I could do it if I was really like, you know, dosed up on painkillers and whatever, but it was just so stressful. I wasn't able to be out for very long. It was just a pain in the ass to, to do it. And the pain would kind of fluctuate as well. It was constant, but I would have major flare ups. So I could never really plan um, anything particularly far ahead because I only knew really on the day whether I could do it or not so yeah it was it was horrible and looking back now if fuck knows how I managed to actually get through that I've got an amazingly supportive partner which helped dramatically he also worked from home so we were both in the same vicinity all of the time otherwise yeah I would have been you know I would have been forced to look after myself obviously but it would have been very difficult um I could get about but I'd have to be very hunched over when I walked. So my body was like an L shape like that. So my psoas was so contracted, I was like literally hunched over. Um, and I used to use this shiatsu massager, massager that I had multiple times a day. I had this like constant bruise on the back, on my back and like calluses on my back from using this thing so often. It was the only thing that would let up the tension in my back long enough to be able to get around a bit. So I did a lot of that. I did a lot of painkiller injections. I did... But they, the weird thing is, when I went to the emergency room a few times, they gave me diazepam injections yeah. for a herniated disc. So where's the fucking logic in that? And it worked. I don't know why I didn't realise at the time. I didn't know what they were giving me an injection. I was just like, yeah, I was high. I didn't care. I was like, yeah, this is nice. Uh, but yeah, as soon as my muscle, it's basically a muscle relaxant, right? So as soon as your muscles recontract, then the pain came back. Right. And also probably a big fat element of placebo going on as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I guess so. There must have been times in when you were thinking, "This is how it is." Like I, I can't oh, yeah. way of getting out of this. Um, but yeah. how, how did you? How did you kind of? Yeah. How did you keep going and keep trying new things? And I guess yeah. I saw it progressively getting a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I'd found by this point um, support networks online of people doing the same thing, going through the same issues. And I'd seen success stories, thousands of success stories, and many of them very much like mine as well, because back pain is such a common thing. 
Mm-hmm. And the book is called Healing Back Pain. So I was just like, look, this this is the real deal. This is what's happening to me. And the more I researched, and again, like I say, I worked from home, so I had plenty of time on my hands to do this. I wasn't working a you know mad, crazy nine to five job. I didn't have kids. It was just like I could deep dive into it. Um, but I didn't really have a choice, to be honest, either. It was like, I'm going to commit to this. It might take years. It might take months. I had no idea because everyone's journey is very different. Um, I guess I just hoped and then I felt I started feeling relief after a couple of months and I thought there's there's more to this this has to be this has to be working this can't be in my head mm-hmm. it had been so terrible for like for as long as kind of, I could kind of remember that became my whole life you know um yeah you just you have to you have to move forward you don't really have a choice I was never like I didn't get to a point where I was like suicidal or anything like that I was very depressed but I wasn't like I'm going to end my life, you know, but for many people that is, that is their normality. You know, it's, it's that bad, like symptoms that don't ever go away and the anxiety and depression that comes along with it is, uh, is fucking awful. Yeah. Could you talk us through, um, well, just the, which I mentioned at the beginning, the, the sliding doors moment, essentially like how different your life is now. Yeah it was um i mean could you talk us through the ways in which this uh yeah hopefully you'll say yeah but uh you know your life is better now you know the positives yeah. you can take from this like how you were before like if you could look at how your life might have been and how it is now yeah 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 massively i mean there's so many different elements to be honest being pain free is actually not the best thing that's happened it's almost a side effect of what this work has done it's made me realize how much of my authentic self I was burying and how much I was trying to be someone else or trying to be this overachiever or trying to be this validation seeking, um, like just not, not myself. I was, I was like running on autopilot was the easiest way to kind of explain it to you. Um, I'm much more resilient now. I stand up for myself when I believe in certain things. I'm braver. Um, I'm obviously more mobile. I now live in a different country. I lived in Spain when all this happened. Um, I have a completely different career, completely different. I used to think I used to hate people. And now I am of service to a suffering community, which is really mad. Um, and I love it. Like I've just become, I feel like I've found my like Dharma, my, my life purpose because of the pain. It's really quite odd to think that that would push you in a really positive direction. But I certainly think that's happened to me. Like I was, I didn't like my job. I like designing. I like creative stuff, but that I hated my job, mm. hated it. No wonder I was in so much pain. Yeah. But I thought you just get used to your life, though, don't you? You get used to your normality. You're like, I have to work nine to five. I have to work for these wankers. I have not my partner, the other wanker I was working for. <laughs> I have to do these things. I have to drink every weekend. I have, you know, you get stuck in this perpetual cycle of like what society programs or your life programs for you, and your body says no. In fact, that's another really good book. Body says no. That's Gabo Mate as well. That's fucking brilliant. You should read that. It's really cool um the body keeps the score is another one i'll send you some links if you want to have a little read yeah, I'll include them in the show notes as well for people. sure yeah um a lot of the links and stuff i've got on my website as well so i could just we could put that in there and then you've got all the resources there the stuff that i used and the people that i follow and um everything that helped me but yeah my life is i've done a complete 180 really everything's changed every single thing has changed apart from my partner he's been there thick and thin he's he's a do or die <laughs> <laughs> and uh like my final question like to mm. someone who is going through you know the the darkest time at the moment and they are maybe sofa bound or you know but maybe going through something different it doesn't have to be the same physical issues but mentally mm. in that same dark place what's your advice to them uh, from a mindset point of view not necessarily practically i guess, I guess. just like be hopeful and don't give up on thinking that what necessarily doctors tell you is 100% true, 100% real for you. They don't know your life story. They might not even ask your life story. Um, and just know that your emotional world 
governs your physical world like it's not the other way around mm -hmm. um there's so much to be learned and so much for us to like and it takes a while as well you can't learn this shit overnight really unless you you know you really deep dive but there's so much more to the medical the regular medical model than what we need to know especially if you've got chronic conditions um and if any of this story or any of the stories that you put out there or any of your own story is even resonating this amount then look it up research it do your own research listen to these experts and just just don't give up basically don't give up there's you don't have to suffer it's not a life sentence it's not what an mri says you are not a piece of paper that says all this fearful shit you're not that you are this whole being that can be healed in very many different ways not just like have surgery and then give your whole give all your power away to a doctor or to a packet of pills or whatever you know you like you you literally have all of the power depending on what is what your issue is if you have a mind body issue all the power you need is inside yourself mm. you are your self regulator you are your self healer it sounds completely bullshit i get that we're all programmed to understand the medical model and think that you know if we have an issue physically mentally whatever we go and we get someone to fix it but this is all internal work this is no one can do this for you I can give you tools and links to read and, and you know, experts to, to follow and stuff, but the work is on you. And that is quite a burden in a way, but also like one of the most empowering things I think I've ever, ever experienced. Like, mm. you know, you, your own intuition will tell you whether this is what you have. You're probably thinking this throughout this conversation. Well, this sounds really familiar. Like, you know, maybe this is what's happening to me. Even if you only think maybe it's only 50% me, maybe it's partially my surgery, maybe then my whatever it is. Um, yeah. yeah. Learn, keep learning, like be curious, you know, drop the fear a little bit and just be curious and keep, keep looking. Cause it mm -hmm. took me a while to find this stuff. Even when I had the book in my hands, it took me a while to find what to do about it. Um, but there's so many communities online now and so much support. And literally I've met some of the most amazing people I've ever met my whole life through this community through people that are suffering, like massive enlightenment can come, you know? Mm, love that. Love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, mm. and if, if people wanted to, to reach out to you in any capacity, uh, mm. what's the best way for them to do that? my my website is my tmsjourney.com so t for tommy m for mother s for sugar mm -hmm. journey.com um and i'm the same handle on facebook and instagram um you can reach out to me there and that's yeah all my stuff is all of the resources i use are on my website links to my yoga meditation breathwork classes are on my website it's all there i've made it quite user-friendly and easy to understand so there's summaries of what mind body issue is there's links to the podcast links to the books links to all the stuff that we spoke about um and yeah i can feature you on there now that you've interviewed me <laughs> <laughs> well i will you'll have your own home yeah awesome uh cool well i'll, I'll include that stuff um, all the links and everything in the show notes and uh yeah thanks so much for coming on um i think this, you know, this some, personally a lot of stuff i can take away there uh yeah. now for me to do but yeah i'm sure that'll be the case for many others listening so thank you so much for coming on and sparing the time yeah no problem my pleasure thanks for 